Thanks for checking out the video. Today we're going to be discussing a topic a lot of people have asked about. I'll be showing you what you need to bring riding with you. Hey guys, it's been a while since I did a video like this. A lot of people often ask me, what do you bring when you're going riding, especially on a longer, more intense ride? So today, I'm gonna go over the gear box that I've been bringing with me for the last couple seasons in the Razor. There's nothing too complex in this, but I think that if you bring just a few key items with you on longer trips, it can really make the difference between a good ride and a bad ride when things don't go according to plan. The way this works the best is, if all the guys in your group have a similar box like this, then between the group of you, there's pretty much nothing you won't be able to fix on the trail because everyone's gonna have a little bit of a different variety of items with them. Between a group, you can fix just about anything. We've run into quite a few serious issues on the trail in the past, and we've usually been able to remedy them with a bit of critical thinking and some teamwork. Everyone's always got some sort of tools and a spare part here and there, so if everyone comes prepared, you can get yourself through anything, into anything, and out of anything. Make sure you leave me a comment. Getting comments from you guys really helps me know what you want to see in the next videos and, and, and what you like and what you don't like. Um, like I mentioned, a bunch of people have asked me to do a video on this topic. Everyone always wants to know what we bring with us, um, how we prepare ourselves for longer journeys or longer road trips. So I'm gonna go over this in detail and um, you guys can leave comments on what you like to bring, um, more recommendations on maybe some other things I should add to my gearbox, and um, maybe some cool stories about how you've had some weird fixes on the trail with some weird stuff. So let's dive into it. Um, it's pretty straightforward. I'm literally just gonna open up this box that I'm currently in the process. I need to restock a few items, so we're gonna go through it. I'm gonna give you a rundown of what's in here. Um, I've used a lot of stuff out of this box on the last few rides, so every few rides I have to go through it and kind of resupply the stuff I've used and make sure everything's still good. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, leave us a thumbs up, share the videos with your friends, and also follow us on Instagram and on Facebook to keep in touch. Depending on the machine you have, whether it's a Can-Am Maverick, a Polaris Razor, a Polaris Ranger, an Articat Wildcat, a YXC, whatever, make sure you get yourself a nice sturdy box. I've got this Plano gear box. It's a fishing box or a hunting box or something. I bought it at Walmart for like $30. I've literally had it for four or five seasons. It's a tough piece of uh, plastic. It's worked well. It's relatively waterproof. I've had it, um, I pressure wash it all the time. It's got a nice lip on it, so none of the water can get under there. It's flexible even in the cold. So first of all, make sure you get yourself something that's big, that fits tightly and nicely into your cargo box or wherever you're gonna be keeping it. And that's also easy to get in and out of when other gear is around it. And that's easy to strap down. I usually just strap this down with some bungee cords or a ratchet strap, depending on what kind of gear I'm bringing with me. It fits nicely into the box. You guys have probably seen it in a ton of the videos sitting in the back of the Razor. All right, let's dig in here then. So I'm gonna dig through most of the items here and then I'll give you a, a little breakdown of why I think it's important to have certain things in this box and why I bring them. So let's get into it. Obviously, paper towels. You always need something, something good to wipe with. A pair of gloves for when you're cold or doing some sort of mechanical work. Even uh, if you're using a chainsaw or a hacksaw, I also bring a machete and or a hatchet with me at all times. This is my trusty Friskers brush axe. Friskers, for all you guys, you probably know, make some of the best um, best kind of cutting equipment out there for landscaping and uh, you know trimming brush and stuff like that. Um, this thing's awesome. I've had it for a few seasons. It's Teflon coated. It, I've never had to sharpen it. It's got basically a lifetime edge on it as long as you don't hit any rocks. I've dug with it. I've cut down some thick trees with it. It's insane how much cutting power this thing has. In Canada, you can pick one up a Canadian Tire. In the States, you can probably grab one at Home Depot or anywhere else that sells Friskers items. I really encourage you guys to get one of these and or a, any other really good machete. Sometimes you get jammed up against a tree or someone else does or you need to cut a new trail and it's good to have something like that. I always carry a bunch of spare rags with me. Obviously, you need a spare belt. I'm not gonna get into the details of what kind of belt you need to be running. We can save that for another video. I often carry a Gates belt as my spare. 
bug spray or bug repellent, uh, depending on what time of year it is. In the winter time, you don't really need this in your gearbox. Some good tapes and stuff like that. So I've got some aluminum tape here. It's good, it's resistant to heat, it's pretty sticky. I always have some spare winch line in case you break your winch cable. If you break a winch line and you're in a situation where you've stressed out that winch so much that you've broken a line, it's pretty evident you need that winch to get out or get someone else out. So breaking a line and not being able to, to fix it sucks. This also doubles as a winch line extension. This saved my butt a few times, once predominantly in uh, West Virginia when I rolled with Shelby, my girlfriend, we were out riding solo and I rolled the razor on one of the rock house trails and um, there was no good trees around in the angle I needed them. So this saved my ass because um, this, it's still tied together with my, um, with my toe strap here and I managed to extend my winch line long enough to get to a, a tree. I could climb a tree and get myself out safely. Here, let me make some more room. Here, I've got a mix of tools, sockets, ratchets, stuff like that. A couple ratchets, extensions, all the important sizes of sockets you'll need depending on your machine. For a razor, that's a 17, a 15, a 13, a 10 mil. You need a 27 mil to get your um, axle nuts off. You need a set of snap ring pliers. Um, you need a variety of deep and shallow sockets. It's good to have these. I always carry extra tools. It's never a bad thing to have more than you need. You're not carrying this stuff on your back. An extra 20 pounds are not gonna destroy your razor or affect anything. I've got an additional half inch drive ratchet for some of those bigger, more tighter bolts. A bottle of slime, tire sealant, just in case someone runs into some issues or you get a few smaller punctures. A couple extra bungee cords, always good to have. Another rag in there. I also use the rags to shove in between cans and stuff to stop them from rattling. Obviously, you need duct tape. Can't leave home without duct tape. I've got a little, obviously when you're going on a shorter ride five minutes from home or just on your property and you know you can walk back in 10 minutes or whatever, or you're just at your buddy's place or you're doing a road burn, you don't always need this and I don't always bring this. I'll just bring, uh, I've always got zip ties and duct tape and, and some pliers and stuff in the glove box and that usually will get you out of most binds. Trusty WD-40, it goes hand in hand with the duct tape, you don't leave home without it. I always bring a can of brake cleaner. I use that to clean items, like if you get contamination somewhere, if you need to clean a part off when you're, when you're fixing it on the trail. But most importantly, this usually comes out when you pop a bead on the trail and you need to reseed it in a weird scenario. So um, you've probably seen in some of our videos that we do uh, pop a bead and we'll spray a bunch of brake clean inside light it with a lighter or a match and it'll pop that bead right back on. Now, when you reseat that bead, it's all great that you reseat the bead, but you need something to get the air back in that tire. So I've got a little portable compressor. Mine's seen better days. It's hurting, but I've had this thing for years and it's saved my ass so many times. Got a little bit of sentimental attachment to it, but this will be something I'll be replacing soon. I've also got some butane, um, just kind of like a redundancy really, um, in case I run out of brake clean or something, I'm not going to wash parts with this. So if I use all my brake clean washing parts and then pop a bead, I can still reseed it using butane. I've got a dry box here with a bunch of other supplies inside. I have some trioxane, which is basically compressed fuel for like cooking stoves and stuff like that. It pretty much burns wet. It'll get wet wood going. It'll burn in pretty much any condition. So um, it's, you can get this at the surplus store. It comes in little, it's in a little aluminum packet under there. And uh, that's just in case we need to start a fire. Someone swamps, someone gets wet and it's cold. Um, this will get a fire started in just about any scenario. I always carry some high temp silicone or some RTV gasket maker, some high quality grease. I always carry JB Weld. Um, you should probably be carrying JB Weld, the quick kind, the JB Quick. It'll seal up faster, but 
This is usually something I'll use, like if I'm on a long two or three day ride and I break something, I get back to camp, I can fix it and overnight it'll set. I've got some extra JB Weld in there because sometimes you need a lot of it. Got a fire starter. Just in case. Lighter, usually have a few lighters. Got some five minute two part epoxy. And I've got some super glue, which can also double for um, like a liquid bandage in case you get a, a cut you want to seal up quickly. I've got a screwdriver set here with a bunch of different bits, a bunch of torque bits, all sorts of stuff. You never know what you're going to need to get into and people have various machines. I've got an assortment of hose clamps, um, butt connectors, uh, self-tapping screws, a few fuses, some washers, um, some electrical connectors, just a, just a whole mix of um, items you might need to, to fix a wiring problem or, uh, or something like that. Who knows what. Hold panels together with some self-tappers. Uh, hose clamps can save your, your, your butt in a lot of different ways, which is why I carry a whole ton of hose clamps. You can actually fix a broken control arm with hose clamps and some sticks. Um, I've got a bunch of miscellaneous Polaris nuts and bolts there, nylocks, stuff like that. As you can see, I, I put everything in little compartments to keep it nice and clean, easy to organize. If I get water in here, I've had this case kind of float away on me when I've tipped the razor over in the water before. Here I've got even more nuts and bolts and stuff. Also in a nice water sealed container. These are usually bolts that I've removed, upgrading components or, or stuff like that. I've also thrown in some miscellaneous hardware, some nuts, some heavy duty Allen heads, just a mix of various size nuts. Many of these are replacement nuts for parts of the spindle assembly, the, the carriers, the calipers, stuff like that in case I um, drop a bolt or break something or need to fix something on the trail or back at camp. Uh, these have saved us a bunch of times because it doesn't matter if you've got a Can-Am or an Articat or whatever. Uh, if you need an extra bolt or two, you can usually find something that'll work in there. Here I have my trusty tire kit. I keep it in here. Just nice and organized. In there I've got a bunch of tire snakes. The wormies, whatever you want to call them, tire worms. As far as these go, I find the cheaper ones work the best. I like to buy mine at Princess Auto when I'm in Canada or Harbor Freight when I'm in the States. They usually go on sale really cheap for a box. I think we got a box here. Here's a box of them. They go on sale for like four or five dollars. These are from Harbor Freight. Got some other ones. These are a quick weld product. I find these cheap ones still do work better. In case you got a big tear, and this is one thing I need to replace, um, or you're getting a bunch of plugs, like sometimes we'll use 20 plugs. I usually glue them together with some of this vulcanizing agent. That helps. Now those plugs are no good unless you have a reaming tool and a plug insertion tool. So I usually have those handy. This is something I keep close to the top because it's probably one of the items I use most. You always have flats. Here, if you're running beadlock wheels, um, then a lot of you guys will know that sometimes they'll loosen up. So I carry a whole set of spare beadlock bolts and washers. Market wheels sometimes they'll come with like a spline tuner lug. My razor runs KMC wheels and I run aftermarket um, lugs, so I need this special lug nut uh, socket to get them off. So make sure you carry that or you can't get your wheel off and fix anything else. Here's just a bunch of other tire plugs, these ones are the ones you need to put glue on. Those ones are made by slime or something, I think. Zip ties. You can never have too many zip ties. I bring them in all sorts of uh, shapes and sizes. More rags. Can't have too many rags. 
a big heavy duty toe strap, just in case. Can never have too many of those either. I always throw in some nitrile gloves all over the place, like the zip ties and the rags, always handy. Here I have some super heavy duty zip ties. These are also from Harbor Freight. These have saved my butt a few times. You can fix some pretty intricate things using these big zip ties and they're very strong. They're also good for securing items, like if you break a plastic off or someone breaks something, you need to secure it. I always carry an extra bottle of antifreeze. Worst case scenario, you can fill this with just distilled water in case you need to top off. If you uh, puncture a line or whatever, if someone overheats. Another rag. Here I have some more tools, a little cobalt tool kit from um, Home Depot. It's just a small one. It's easy to get into tight spots with this. I don't use it very often, but a couple times one or two of the guys have needed it. So it's just, it's light, it's compact, it's good to have. It fits in there really nicely. Here I have my main tool bag. And this tool bag's got an assortment of items in it. Another rag, another roll of electrical tape. Pink, because when people break down, it's always fun to put salt in their wounds. So when your buddy yells to you, hey man, I need some duct tape, I just ripped off my plastic or my windshield's hanging off or whatever, you say, no problem buddy, here you go, and you toss him a nice high fluorescency pink roll of duct tape, and you proceed to make fun of him. I got some glow sticks, in case you need to call an air support or something, or an ambulance, or you're in a di <laughs> Let's hope we don't need to use these for any bad reasons. Um, here, I've got the Polaris factory toolkit, you need that. It's got the belt tool and stuff like that in it. It usually comes in your glove box, in your machine. I have two of them. I always keep one in my glove box, one in here. I've got more zip ties. Now, another important part people omit often, I've got a set of uniballs and studs here. My Razor runs Super ATV, heavy duty, forward facing, high clearance control arms with the uniball and stud conversion. So I have a spare set of old uniballs in case I break something. I can salvage the parts off these and hopefully fix my ride good enough to get it back to camp or uh, to keep riding the next day. I have a, a high rod a taper fit rod assembly here for the Super ATV heavy duty steering kit. Obviously components like this will be specific to your machine or your model of machine, but you want to bring stuff like this. It doesn't matter if they're used like this one, it's just a spare part. Here I have a set of Super ATV heavy duty rod ends. I run the Super ATV heavy duty steering setup on my Razor. So having spare rod ends or tie rod ends if you run a stock setup is super important. Without these, you're not going anywhere. They also help because a bunch of guys in the group run similar setups. So um, a lot of this stuff is transferable. You've probably noticed that most of the guys in our crew run either a Razor or a Can-Am Maverick. So um, a lot of these components are transferable between us. We can share them. And like I mentioned earlier, if everyone has a gear kit similar to this, then you're not gonna have everything you need in your gear kit. Hopefully your buddy's got a couple things you don't have. Here's other rod end. Got more zip ties. I've got some tape. This is Canadian tape because it's hockey tape. Good for all sorts of fixes. This one's been in there a while, it's a little deformed. Got more nuts and bolts, smaller ones in there. More trioxane in case I need to start a fire. As you can see, I'm obviously into redundancy here. I got a ton of nitrile gloves in there set of side cutters, wire cutters, pliers, bunch of Allen heads, adjustable wrench, more gloves, more zip ties, some wire, uh, both just soft wire to tie, tie stuff up if you break something or need to secure something. And then I've got some electrical wiring under there in case you need to make a quick fix or splice something up. Channel locks, more pliers, 
Here I've got some small ATV adapter cables for my NOCO Genius Booster. I usually carry the NOCO Genius Booster in here. It's a mobile lithium ion booster pack. I've got it in the truck right now because I need to boost it. A few rolls of electrical tape. Some paracord wrapped around a bolt just to keep it kind of contained. This stuff is amazing. You can also split it and inside there's a bunch of like smaller cord and you can use that to tie stuff up. I've actually heard of people in the military using it to stitch up wounds. Don't recommend doing that unless you're in the middle of nowhere and you have to and you think you're qualified. <laughs> um, needle nose. And then in here, I'm not going to go through every bit, but uh, basically an assortment of wrenches. Just like I mentioned earlier, you're going to need certain size wrenches to do certain jobs on these machines. Just like you'll need certain size sockets. I've got some extra sockets, the popular ones I need in there. Another adjustable, I've got like three adjustables in here. More heavy duty hardware, bolts, stuff like that. Something to, to come up with a fix and washers to hold stuff together maybe. Another set of needle nose pliers. A craft ton more zip ties, more electrical tape. A small, tiny little um, interchangeable screwdriver so you can get into tight places. And more zip ties, some spare valve stems. Some, I've ripped off valve stems before, so some spare valve stems. Another spare valve stem. More zip ties, more gloves. Another adjustable wrench. Okay, I really gotta go through here because I, I got a little too many of the same stuff. Sometimes I'll add stuff and I'll forget it's another adjustable wrench. That's five or six already. <laughs> so I'm going to remove a couple of those, obviously. It's springs coming around the corner. I'm going to get the razor already. So this is the time I'm going to go through this kit and uh, reorganize all this stuff. So throw that stuff back in there. So remember, spare ball joints, spare tie rod ends are good to have, especially on longer trips. There's components that frequently will fail. You might not be able to Sometimes you'll notice that a component is failing, but you can still get back to camp and then you still got two days of riding ahead of you. And if you don't have that spare ball joint or something, your ride's ruined basically. You got this, you go back to camp, get that machine taken apart and you can fix it. Now we've got all our tools. We got all the, all the stuff kind of looked at. There's only one more key area that I think sometimes people forget about. You can fix your machine, but your machine's no good if you can't fix yourself. So I've got some first aid stuff. This is one area I got to, I need to address. I've been into this first, these first aid supplies a handful of times over the season. Nothing too, too serious, but for various reasons. I just have some basic supplies. Um, I need to address these. Uh, first aid supplies don't like to get hot and cold and cycle in the heat a lot. This box will be out on the trailer, out on rides, out camping for days at a time in hot, hot weather. So I need to go through here and I need to check out some of the items, uh, like obviously this box is broken, I'm gonna have to get a new container. Um, you just need some basics in here. I've got some, I've got some uh, stretch gauze, got a variety of high quality band-aids. I've got some alcohol swabs in there. I've got some liquid barrier, some Kavlon barrier, in case you get a cut. I've got some Benadryl after bite. I've got some ibuprofen in case you have a headache or some pain. I've got some allergy formula, so like a Benadryl, in case um, somebody gets a bite or a, or a sting or, or exposure to some sort of plant they might be allergic to and they're having swelling or an allergic reaction. Hopefully you can tame it down with that. That saved us a few times actually. People have gotten bug bites and they've had reactions. Some more uh, various size Band-Aids, more alcohol swabs, um, some non-adherent pads in there, um, like a tagoderm absorbent dressing in case you've got a wound that's oozing a little bit. It's a nice breathable dressing. Um, some more, some more spun gauze sponges. Uh, some clean gloves. Um, you know, not nitrile, but actual like clean gloves. Got an emergency blanket. You never know. Someone might fall in the water, get really cold. You light that fire. You get them in this blanket. Try and conserve their body heat. Here I've got more, um, more gauze pads. 
And if someone's got a big cut or a compound fracture or laceration of sorts, which we, ha we, we have seen some serious injuries on our rides, um, these will help kind of clean the area up, absorb some of those bodily fluids, and you can uh, wrap those up and hopefully get the person fixed up good enough to um, get them back to help. I had a bunch more stuff in here, but I kind of ate through it this season. Uh, I got a bunch more supplies. You should also have like some Steri strips in there, uh, something to hold like lacerations closed with. Um, you should have, um, you can even have some uh, antiseptic like hand wash, some Kleenex, some more hand wash. Um, just a variety of stuff. What I'll do is maybe um, in a future video I'll go over like what I think is important to include in a first aid kit when you're out riding often in the middle of nowhere. What I have here is just very basic. I have a more advanced first aid kit that I bring with me on more complex rides or when I know we're going to be hours away from anybody like in northern Ontario when you're six hours into a trail and it took you six hours to get there from a town that probably doesn't even have a hospital to begin with. Um, you are your lifeline. You need to be able to take care of the guys you're with. Uh, it's a team responsibility. You go in together, you come out together. If something happens, you drop what you're doing and you do everything you can to help that person. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, many you probably do, I do work in frontline healthcare. So um, I might be a little more over prepared in this department than some people would be. Just because I, I've seen the negative repercussions of not being prepared in a situation like this. So here we have it. All our supplies. It looks like a lot laying on the table here, but really it's just a bunch of simple items. And when you piece them together, you make yourself a pretty awesome kit. It's not very expensive to do this. A lot of the tools I have in there are just uh, duplicates of what I've got in the shop. Uh, just cheaper tools, nothing too fancy. Having a belt, you need a belt or like 20 if you're me. There's like my belt, my belt rack. <laughs> I've got a ton of them. Um, yeah, some brake clean, stuff like that. So yeah, go through the video. Leave me a comment if you think I'm missing some key items. And uh, I'm hoping that this gives you guys a better idea of the kind of tools and, and the necessities you need on the trail to kind of get you out of a bind. So I hope you found that video helpful, guys. Um, if you want a more in-depth version of the video, leave me some comments. If there's specific other videos you want to see, then also leave me a comment and let me know what you're thinking. Um, sometimes it's tough to figure out what you guys want to watch. I know the channel's been a little slower lately. I've been really swamped and busy with other stuff um, outside of the channel and other life responsibilities lately. But I will be catching up and getting out on the trail, doing all that technical riding you guys love to see as soon as spring rolls around and hopefully in the next few weeks actually. Um, we got a lot in store for 2019, it's going to be a great year. We've teamed up with some even more um, awesome partners. Uh, the channel is steadily growing. I really thank you guys all for the support. I love reading all the comments you guys leave me. Um, all the positive feedback I get, it's just overwhelming. Uh, this channel surpassed all my biggest expectations when I first started it. I really do feel blessed to have all you guys here uh, joining in in uh, the pastime I love, and I love sharing my videos, the rides, this kind of stuff with all you guys. A bunch of people have asked me to do like a, a shop tour, since I do have a pretty big shop. Um, so um, a lot of people in the videos and the mechanical type videos, like on the other channel, Adrenaline Junkie Project, have said, you know, show us your shop, show us your shop. So um, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna organize a few more things before I do that, just make sure it's all nice and clean, and I'll do a video of the shop tour. If there's any other stuff you want to see, just leave me a comment. Make sure you follow us on social media, Facebook and on Instagram. Instagram's a great way to get in touch and keep up with upcoming rides and new release videos and stuff like that. And obviously subscribe to this channel, Adrenaline Junkie Product, and our, main, uh, and our secondary channel, Adrenaline Junkie Projects, where we do more videos like this and technical stuff. But I thought I'd post this video on the main channel because it really does apply to the riding end of things. So here's the razor, it's just sitting here, it's kind of been hibernating for a while. It needs a bit of love, it needs some maintenance. Um, I'm just waiting on some parts from Super ATV. I got a Super ATV Rhino heavy duty prop shaft coming. I've got some other Super ATV goodies. I'm actually going to try out a new set of their, um, I'm running their heavy duty high clearance fork facing ARs with uniball conversion. Um, recently, the guys at Super ATV and I have been in contact. They said I should try out some of their new heavy-duty thread-in ball joints. 
because they're going away from the uniball and stud because they feel that their new ball joints are just as tough as the uniball and stud, if not better. So I'm gonna swap over to a set of those, try those out. I gotta replace some boots on my Rhino 2.0 axles. I'm also gonna replace one of the CV joints that got contaminated when I destroyed a boot. I'm gonna do a little bit more routine maintenance, get the machine all 110%. And then that way I can get out on the trail soon and start beating this thing again, get you guys some nice fresh new content. A lot of the content I've been posting lately is stuff that's kind of been in the vault, um, content that I filmed um, within the last year, year and a half that I haven't gotten around to editing. There's been a lot of West Virginia content pouring out from 2017. Got two more trips from West Virginia to put out too. 2018, we went twice. I haven't gotten around to that content yet. Got some content from South Carolina as well as Tennessee and a bunch of stuff in between like Northern Ontario and some other rides. So I'm gonna work my uh, butt off and try and get caught up on as much of that editing as I can before spring. I know a lot of that content isn't as technical as a lot of you guys are commenting and liking, but the truth is, you know that me and my group, we ride a lot of mixed uh, terrain. We don't just do technical riding, we don't just do track riding, we don't just do high speed trail, we do it all. So um, the videos kind of encompass all of that. So what you see is kind of what we've been doing. We don't just ride one style. So um, I know a lot of you guys, maybe you'll like the West Virginia videos a lot. Some of you guys won't enjoy those as much. Other people will love the technical videos where there's carnage and we're rolling over and we're breaking axles and, and popping beads off tires. But not every ride is like that. Not every ride's a technical ride. And you can't go out and wreck your machine every ride either because, well, you gotta pay to fix it, stuff like that. And it's not cheap. So basically with that being said, you know, if you like certain content more, Watch, this, watch the technical videos. If, if you like the more scenic videos, then, then I welcome you guys to watch the more scenic videos. A lot of you enjoy them all, you enjoy the mix, and I really like that, I appreciate that. Um, I'm super happy to be able to share all that content with you. So like I said, there'll be a good mix of content coming in 2019. Uh, there's gonna be a good mix of technical content. Um, we're lucky enough to have some awesome sponsors on board. Royal Distributing's been with us for a long time now. They've been looking after us for coming on the third season. So has Super ATV, MBRP Power Sports. This wrap was done by ECD Customs. FXR Racing is a Canadian uh, apparel line that's come on with us this past season too. Um, yeah, we've had, a, we've had a lot of support. Fin Trail waiting gear. You've seen us wearing our Fin Trail gear. Um, so yeah, check out some of the supporters. They really do make a lot of these videos possible. They help us out a lot. Um, it really helps me go that extra mile when I got a little bit of backing. Uh, a lot of you guys often ask about like the revenue from the channel. There's not much revenue from the channel. The channel's not that big when you compare it to some of the big fish out there with millions of subscribers and stuff like that. So um, the goal is to keep growing it, but the goal is to keep it grassroots. Uh, this isn't a business, this is a passion project to me. I love making these videos and I'd be making them whether I got a, a penny out of them or not. So any money that I do kind of generate from the channel from ads, sometimes people complain about the ads. Well, YouTube puts ads on all the videos anyways. So you know what? If there's going to be ads and there's going to be some revenue, then I just want you guys to know all that revenue does go back into the channel. Every bit of it. And usually what I do is I use that couple hundred dollars that I get here and there. It's not much. And uh, I just put it towards new camera gear and stuff like that. Uh, editing software, upgrades to my computer so I can edit more. Um, it, it's not like I'm using it to, to go out and have steak dinners. Um, all, that, all that profit from the t-shirts and stuff like that you guys support through, that all goes back 100% to the channel so that you guys can enjoy these machines tearing up the trails and, um, and just doing full sends as much as we can. So uh, thanks again. And I'll stop rambling now. Appreciate all the support. See you guys out on the trail. Ride safe out there. Make sure to check out the other videos. We'll see you soon. I've also got a track car I built sitting here. This thing's all being handmade by me. It's a project I started long before I was into razors. I don't know how many of you guys are into cars, but this thing's pretty badass. It's a Volkswagen Mark IV 2001 Golf chassis. 1.8 T crate motor in it and a bunch of custom goodies. If you guys do like stuff like this, track cars, road racing, leave me a comment, let me know. I can do a little video about this car. There's a lot to talk about. I love this thing. Haven't had as much time to work on it lately as I wish I have. Uh, the budget hasn't been there 
because you got to kind of split it up amongst everything. But uh, this thing's almost ready to rock. It needs like a thousand bucks worth of goodies thrown at it before it's track ready and a new set of tires and I'm ready to tear up the track. So um, yeah, it is a beast. Only custom, everything on it. All the TIG welding, front mount intercooler, all the piping. Everything's been all built in this shop. Fully gutted interior. This thing's set up for road racing. Over here, under a bunch of my fin trail riding gear, <laughs> that needs a good wash from our last few rides, is a 1979 Datsun 280ZX that I'm in the process of restoring. It's a uh, car from New Mexico originally. It's never seen a winter. It's got about, what is it? Uh, it's like something like, it's got like under 60,000 original miles on it. So it's in really good shape. Uh, it's a cool car. It's called Classic, guys. These things are getting really popular. It's got that really iconic front end with those deep headlights. It's a sweet machine. If you want to see more about this and, and you do like older cars, then uh, yeah, leave me a comment. Let me know. I can do a little bit more of a video on that. I have been keeping some some video of me progressing through it. So once I, I, I get that together, I'm going to do a cool little restoration video on that. Here I've got one of my original ATVs. It's a Kawasaki. I uh, put a lift on it, did a bunch of other stuff. I got to get it back together. I just did some clutch work to it. Got 30s for it, a bunch of other goodies, upgrades that I'm going to slap together. I got a three-wheeler hiding in there. ATC 125, it's almost ready to go. I just got just the valves on it and do a few things to it. So let me know. I got a lot to show you guys in the shop here. So um, I'll slap together that shop tour video in the next little while. Then in that video, you guys can also leave me some comments. Let me know if you want some more in-depth videos and info on some of the other projects in the Adrenaline Junkie compound here. There is a lot of them. Anyways, guys, thanks again. See you in the next video. Ride safe out there.